Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of a landscape painting. So, I have a picture here. This is kind of what we're going to be doing. So, we're going to be doing a step by step. But before we get started, I'm just going to name the materials. You're going to need a canvas or something to paint on. I'm painting on like this hollow wood sort of canvas. It's like a, almost like a wood canvas is what I'm painting on. It's just all made out of wood, but you can use a canvas, piece of cardboard, some painting paper. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have something to paint on. And then everything you're going to need is a black acrylic marker, or you could use a black Sharpie, or you could take like your black paint and a thin brush and freehand what we're going to be doing just with what we're doing. You kind of need more concentration with your hands, so just make sure to keep a steady hand. You're going to need a dark and a light blue or instead of having a dark and a light you can just have a dark blue <clears throat> and you mix it in with some white till you're happy with a color and also we're gonna need white for this too. Then we're going to need a fuchsia color, fun fuchsia or this is kinda like a pinky purple you can mix pink and purple together then we have two types of pinks. We have party pink and cherry pink blossom. One's just a little bit darker than the other. So you could be, say you have a dark pink, you could just add a little bit of white to it to have two colors. You have two different colors. And then you're going to need a light and a dark green. Again, you could just have a dark green and it mix in some white. But say you only have a light green, if you mix in a little bit, like not even a dot, just a little bit of black, and mix it up with your light green, you will eventually come up with a dark green. You don't really need a lot, like not even a dot. Like, I'm just gonna mark it out. Like that would be way too much, like less than that. So just be careful. So we're gonna, s oh, also you're going to need a few different varieties, a few of paint brushes, not fan brushes, just some normal paint brushes some water just have some water in there and then a painter's palette you don't have to have a painter's palette you can use cardboard works great too and a pencil so is what we're going to be doing first of the entire painting is we're going I'm just gonna zoom in there we're going to be doing the grass part here so I'm gonna mark out this sort of hill shape so basically you're gonna take your pencil and you're going to go down and make a hill shape. You can have some bumps in there because you know hills aren't perfect. So make a little straight line and then go down like that. I'll show you guys whenever I am done doing the hill. So guys, instead of doing the hill, I'm just going to do a straight line across because that will help us mark out our water. You kind of want it in the middle a bit because that will help you with your water and your hill. So after you do a straight line, which I have, it's not directly in the middle. It's a little bit uneven. The line's right here if you can't see. And then I'm going to do my hill. And this line's going to help me guide my hill. So I'm going to quickly do that little hill shape. And remember, there can be some bumps because a hill is not perfect. Because I finally made my little hill shape there. There's a little old freeze. You guys can kind of copy that. Feel free to pause the video if I am going too fast. So. This part here is going to be our hill. Here is going to be our water. So with the hill, we have to do some sort of, we have to go kind of fast, but not too fast. So basically you want to take your dark green and put a layer of that on the hill. So dark green is going to be all the way around here. And then um, we will, oh, um, we're going to put some light green little hints of light green and kind of doing them curved so then we have like that um, I think little like humps in the grass on the hill and we'll have that throughout and then in the end when it's all dry we'll outline those humps in black so you're going to take your dark green and paint 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 and then whenever you're done that I'll show you guys and you're going to take just a small brush and we're going to do hints of green and kind of fade it in. And fading in takes a while because you need to add some. 
but remember you can't take away so less is more so I'm gonna quickly paint it all dark green and then we'll do our light green and remember you don't let that dark green dry because if you do it won't mix properly okay so I've now painted it all and this is gonna be the part where we're gonna need to go fast so I'm gonna quickly reposition my camera Okay guys, so I've switched my camera directions and I've kind of made a little outline on where I'm going to put my light green. So I'm going to take a, um, a paintbrush, I'm just going to take a thin one, and, oops, I grabbed two there, and I'm going to take a little bit of green paint, light green paint, and I'm just going to put it on the lines that I've made, and then I'm going to blend it in. Just blend it into the light green there. So it's pretty easy to blend. Just blend it right in. And then once you've created a little bit of a bubble, then just go in lightly like that. And we're going to do the blend. And then once the um, dark green paint has dried fully, we will add the really bold line. Just right now we can't really do it and make it bold because of the dark green, because of how wet it is. So yeah, I'm just blending it in. It's pretty easy to blend. You just take the paintbrush and slowly move around the dark green. And I just keep on taking some light green and making my line. And then just blending it in and doing little swirls. So that gives me a light patch and then we'll do a little line. That's what I'm going to do right now, but I'm not going to fill it in. I'm just doing almost like an outline. And I'm going to continue to do that for all of these lines. So I make my line and then I do little swirls to blend it in and make it bumpy and whatnot. Because it's all imperfect. And then you know fade it out to the black or to the dark green. So I hope you guys can see this. I think you can because I can kind of see it on my camera here. And you want it you can bring it as far down as you want. You don't have to bring it that far down. So with some lines you can bring it really far down, some lines you don't have to. As long as you have like a dark or light green spot. Because the light green will be more pronounced later whenever we add the light green sort of spark. So this one has kind of dried a little more so I'm going to add my light green. Don't worry we can do more after because it's still a little wet. So just take some time like that basically that's the top of our hill and then I'm just going to blend around the line I just made and make it kind of scratchy so it's not fully blended but it has like a scratchy texture to it I'm gonna kind of bring it up to the camera so there you, you can kind of see hopefully that it has like a scratchy texture and I'm gonna continue to do that with all of these before my paint dries. So I'm gonna quickly do all that. So guys, after I made these little, um, I guess light green highlights, I guess you're gonna call them, I have let it, I'm gonna let it dry a lot more so then I can make my lines, like where I've made all those lines, I can make them more pronounced. Remember, this light to darker in here might look weird, but you want that. It makes it look like patches of the hills. And then on top of that is where we're going to outline it in like a little bit lighter black. So whenever we're done that, so as you can see here, there's more pronounced lines. Ooh, I'm getting myself paint everywhere. Um, where there's more pronounced lines, that's where whenever it's dry, I'm just going to go over it again with light green. So once it, the hill completely dries, make sure it's completely dry, then take your light green again and go over your line. So this line's curved, this one's wiggly, this one's wiggly, and that one's curved, if you can't see that. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for the hill to completely dry, and then I'm going to go over that again. So then we have a clean crisp line if you want and if you have paint pens when it's dried you can take your paint pen and go over it if you want to so I'm gonna let mine dry so make sure to let yours dry completely and then you can do your light green and before I go if you can like and subscribe that'd be great and um, I guess we'll see you guys when mine dries 
So guys, mine, oops, mine has completely dried and I've added in my green lines and it actually is kind of look like, like, look like the hills. So I'll show you guys a picture so everyone can have a refresher on what we are doing. Our line, or my lines at least, are a little bit more pronounced, but that's okay. So as you can see, that's the hill. All these light green that we were doing, this is all we're doing. And then we're going to be adding black shading. I haven't decided yet, but I think I'm going to do black shading, but I actually kind of like it the way it is. But I am going to do a little bit more shading where I'm going to fade in that light green back. So I'm going to take my paintbrush. You guys can't even see that. I'm going to take my paintbrush and take the paint. I'm getting paint everywhere. And pulling it back a bit so we have a little bit more of a darker line with a darker green. So I'm going to do that. You guys don't have to. I'm just pulling it back. So I'm basically going to be taking this dark green but making it darker with a little bit of black like not even a lot like remember that's too much black to make it dark that dark i'm going to pull it back the hills like put paint here and pull it back and pull it back until it has a little bit of a shaded line like we were doing whenever we were making it scratchy that's exactly what i'm going to be doing so i'm going to quickly do that and tell you guys when i'm done so guys, I just finished adding in the black and kind of pulling, well not the black, the very dark green, and pulling it back. And it actually kind of looks like little patches of grass now in the hill. So, I'm not going to be adding that black behind, but if I was, I'll show you guys what I was going to do. So I would take my marker, basically, and go behind where my, my dark green is, I would put black. I wouldn't do a hardcore black. I would take a paintbrush and kind of go take a little bit of black paint, like not even a lot, and just, and then like uh, dry off your paintbrush and then kind of take away some of that black paint and then, you know, fill it in a bit. So yeah, next thing is another fast one that we have to do is going to be the water so the water looks like this which has it's going to be a blue base which I'm going to use this blue I'm going to do up the blue and then I'm going to add in this light blue and this light blue so these three blues are going to be in our ocean and you have to be quick with it like extremely quick because you don't want it to dry again but remember if you do need it to like fade in more then you just add a little bit more black blue gl bla not black blue paint and you just start over again and go over top of it and then put more light blue and it might even look cooler so i'm going to quickly add in my blue paint and then we're going to do the exact same thing we did the green but i will still record what i did so i have now added in my blue this is my blue here and i'm going to take my more light blue I'm going to be doing lines of it, just random places of both the blues, but before I add in the other blue, I'm going to fade this blue in on the spaces where I put it. So I'm just fading it in lightly. As you guys can see there, I've kind of faded it in. So I'm basically just taking lines, putting it in random places, and then I'm just going over top of them. Um, many times just to get that fade in. You don't want to be doing, like, say you have one here and one here, you don't want to be blending those together. Blend them as if they were separate. And then I'm going to take my other light blue, so it's, we have some lighter colors. A lighter blue, it kind of looks white, but it is a light blue, and then fade it in. Because this gives our water a little bit more of a wave-like. So, I just finished the water. Hopefully, you're following along. And that's what it looks like. I think I love doing water because I think it's, like, so calming and everything. It just looks beautiful. So, this is what we have so far. Our, like, my hill isn't perfect, and it doesn't look like a hill. But if I close my eyes a bit and then open them, it looks like a hill. So far, it looks like grass and water. So... 
yeah and now after this we're going to be doing the tree so that's the that make sure you let your painting completely dry because the tree is going to be going some of it in the water and it's going to be growing out of the grass so make sure your painting is completely dry before you even start the, um, the tree so I'm gonna let mine paint or <laughs> let mine dry sorry and then I'll see you guys whenever I'm done that you guys just heads up for my next video I'm going to be doing a gift that I'm doing for my brother that maybe you guys could do at home for your brother or sister or mom and dad so it'll be more of a craft than a painting so I'll see you guys or hopefully the hopefully that'll be next week and then yeah so I just thought I'd tell you guys so you guys could know what we're doing next so guys I actually forgot about something up here our cherry blossom needs a sky now you can leave your sky white if you would like, but I would take a light blue that you use for your water. It can be either the lightest one or the second one. You can choose mine or out of these two. And you're going to be doing a background. I'm going to be using my lightest blue and adding a little bit more white to it because I don't find it um, white enough or like light it blue enough and then you're gonna paint your whole background here and then let everything dry I forgot about that step so yeah just make sure you paint your sky because our cherry blossom tree needs a background so make sure to paint that up so while my painting is drying I thought I would share a little tip always whenever you are painting less is more because whenever you are painting it's easier to add the paint than to take away the paint also whenever you're mixing like say you need to mix a color to make a color always make more than what you think you need because sometimes you can't cur like make that color again so that is a really good tip for when you are doing painting less is always more so make sure to it's like it's easier to add than to take away paint like I can't scrape off my paint and I'm still letting mine dry so mine has dried now, and I'm kind of sketching out my cherry blossom. Basically, you want a trunk, and then you want tons of, like, lines coming out of it as the branches. And, like, they can be curvy, they can be wavy, and once you do that, do that all in pencil first. And then, we'll outline. So yeah, just make sure to do that, and I'll show you guys how mine looks after. So guys, my tree kind of looks a little insane right now. It looks so fun but these are just the branches and these really mean nothing and but I just think mine look kind of cool because they're like kind of wonky so I think it just looks really cool so now I'm gonna outline it all and for this part you can either take a paintbrush and some black paint and like freehand it or you can do it in pencil or you can use a um, acrylic paint pen or you can use a sharpie as long as it's black you can use a regular mark. You don't even have to use a sharpie. Just make sure it's black. Or you can do it brown, whatever you prefer. But I'm doing black just because it kind of contrasts and pushes and pulls with the colors we have used. And remember, if you don't want to have a green hill, you don't have to have a green hill. If you don't want to have blue water, you don't have to have blue water. You don't want a cherry blossom tree with pink. You don't have to have a cherry blossom tree with pink. You can have a cherry blossom tree with green if you want it. Your lake doesn't have to be blue. It could be purple if you want it. If you wanted to have like a crazy world, you can have that. You don't have to follow the exact same colors I'm using and doing the exact same thing that I use. Remember, this is your painting, so just have fun with it. So guys, I just finished doing my tree. It looks a little wonky, but I like it. But once your black dries, you're going to take your pink your lighter pink and your like fuchsia color mine's called fun fuchsia but it's kind of pink and purple mixed together and a little bit of white and we're going to use all of those colors to do the cherry blossoms on our tree and how i'm going to do that is i'm going to take either the back of a pencil or the back of one of my paintbrushes dip it in the paint and just dab it all over is what i'm basically going to do or take this little paintbrush here and make little dots and that's what I'm gonna do all over with all four of those colors and just have fun with it stay on the branches and go a little bit out to fill in all those empty spaces again I'm gonna show a reference picture so that's kind of what it's gonna look like 
Okay, yeah, so I just finished mine. Here it is. Um, as you can see, there's still a little bit of blue spots in there, but I absolutely love it like that. And I also put some down here in the grass so that the tree blossoms or the cherry blossoms have fallen. And I really like it. I still have some blue spaces in there, as you can see between my cherry blossoms, but I still love it. So here is the finished product of the cherry blossom tree. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.